This week on What's Good Cape Cod, we talk about an OG, badass woman, axe throwing, and in our opinion, the best magazine on Cape Cod. I'm Sarah lapsley Martin, And I'm Katie Clancy. Welcome back to What's Good Cape Cod, where we show you Cape Cod through the eyes of a couple of locals. And every Tuesday, we drop a new video that tells you about a person, place, and thing we think you should know about. That's right. And this week, our person... So as Sarah said, the OG, one of the OG badass women. Throwing it back. <laughs> Throwing it back. Throwing way back. Way back. <laughs> to Mercy Otis Warren. So if you've been to the Barnstable uh, Courthouse before, there's a, a statue of this woman, which is great. Um, and, you know, it, it, every time I see a statue, I think of like this person from history. I'm always, I always get back into that. Like I said this before, like the school field trip vibe. Like, yeah. Or you're like in social studies learning. Yeah. Yeah. Learn this from a book. Boring, boring, boring. So, but I've, as an adult, I've taken upon myself to go and like, I have to say, you know what inspired me to look at historic people and places and things better? I be honest is Hamilton, Oh, yep. <laughs> you know, the way Lynn Miranda looked at history and just like brought it and made it relevant. It yeah. made me like, okay, these were real people who did real things. So I looking yeah. at Mercy Otis Warren, like what was her deal? So born in 1728, by the way, she shares the birth date of my eldest, my firstborn oh. happy birthday. They just had their both Virgos. Um, <laughs> anyway, she is known. So she was, she was making a fuss um, during right, right before in the age of the American revolution, when we were getting pretty sick and tired of British rule and she was very sick and tired of it. And she was very vocal about it. And that's what made her a little, di- she's kind of like the Rachel Maddow of her time. Ooh, she yes. would like poke the bear. Yep. She, <laughs> she, so she was born in Barnstable um, oh. and the third of 13 children, which is, you know, Crazy. pretty consistent for the time. Yep. Um, she, she didn't have any formal education, but she just sort of glommed onto her brother's lessons. And yep. um, she, the guy she married was very politically active. So she got, and he was very supportive of her, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Honestly, shout out to the progressive guys of the right. world, past and present, who yep. just support their partners in doing the things they love to do. So yep. This is what got us Mercy Otis Warren. Um, So she began writing uh, political dramas that would denounce British policies and key officials in Massachusetts. So she was really annoying (laughs) to them. What it sounds like. (laughs) I love it. To Governor Thomas Hutchinson, her um, 722 satire, The Adulator, criticized the British colonial, I'm reading from her Wikipedia here, uh, criticized the British colonial governor's policies for full four years before Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. So she was really part of that. She was part of like the movement, sort of like the cultural movement to get people to feel and see like, you know, we can be our own country. Yeah. We don't need these guys. And uh, so I just, I just thought it was so cool to like, to just to put some sunshine on her. Obviously, yep. you know, we as Americans appreciate her. Um, but she she wrote and wrote and wrote, and she actually lived to the ripe old age of 86, which again oh, wow. it back then, that's yeah. <laughs> right? Like yeah. I, I just I just love it. I love that that she gets um that we do honor her, we do recognize her, like like and that bright outspoken, articulate women with yep. passion have always been yes. and will always be. And it's nice to have her having gone before us to, to validate that and to realize what a huge impact she had on the country. Right. That's, that's awesome. So good work, Mercy. <laughs> yes. Good work, Mercy. Keep it going. We are very proud and grateful. All right. Enough mercy. <laughs> um, so our place this week, so our place is also kind of a thing. And our place is the House of Hatchets. So this is axe throwing on yes. Cape Cod. Um, neither Sarah nor I has been there yet. Um, yeah. But I did send out, they had a um, they had a group on around Christmas last year. Oh, so Cape Cod Daily it. Deal. Oh, it was Cape Cod Daily Deal. Yeah. Yep. Wow. How could I say the G word? When we had a Cape Cod, we'll forgive you this time, but (laughs) 
I, I apologize. So anyway, um, so they're in Barnstable um, yep. on Versus Way. They are open. You can go there and people go for everything from bachelor parties to like team building stuff to whatever. Yep. Um, and you can actually bring your own, bring your own food. They've oh. got a liquor license. Yep. And I just thought it was very interesting. So the thing, it's a place and everything, but so axe throwing, you've probably heard a lot about it lately. It's kind of, I, yeah, I feel like it's a new thing around. It's totally trending. It came, it yep. was a Canadian pastime that has okay. become a craze in the United States. Yep. And it, I, I was reading an article called Axe Throwing and Hard Seltzer, <laughs> the 2020's hottest spending trends. People are spending, <laughs> let me just look at this number. Oh God. It's a lot, more than $6 million on axe throwing experiences through Square Sellers, so the Square app to you know, Patreon yeah. Square in 2019, which is a 317 increase in sales compared to the year before. So it's just like, and this is another interesting fact here. On average, the cost of throwing an axe at a target is $34.12 per person. But here in Cape Cod, it's only 25. So hmm. it's a bargain yeah. at House of Hatchets. Uh, but it sounds like so- Maybe much- like a good stress reliever too to throw yeah. that. Yeah, so I went to a cookout- <laughs> Um, to my cousin's very rural place in Connecticut, okay. and he had set up these axe throwing targets. Oh, cool. Yeah, I have to say it's very satisfying because it's yes. kind of heavy, and yeah, like, Whoa! and there is a lot of strategy to it. Yeah, but it's not quite as hard as it looks, or maybe I'm just really good at it. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I, I think I just love that they're here. Um, it's a cool thing to do. You know, we're always looking for like cool gifts to give. And, yep. and I've given this as a gift to my daughter's boyfriend, which yep. I thought he really appreciated it. Yeah, so something cool to do. Good date yeah, night. That's a little yeah. different. So it's not Agreed. like going out to dinner, the movies, which are all good, but it's just like a departure from the same old, same right. old, but you yep. can still have a fun night out. So exactly. House of Hatchets, you guys go check it out. Let us know how it goes. Right. And if we go before, but sure, you will see. Yes. It. We'll see <laughs> pictures. All right. So that's our person. We get our place. Sarah, what's our thing? So this our thing is Cape Cod and the Islands magazine. This oh! magazine- <laughs> Here's- we are huge fans. Yeah. Huge fans from the first time I picked it up. It, it truly was my favorite. It's just feeling it. It's printed on recycled paper. It's the new Cape Cod magazine on the block. And it, it's truly a must read. Um, you know, we both love this. So a little background. It's an independent magazine. It's owned by a Cape Cod family, Eric and Fati, and then Kelly Chase is the editor. So it's really just the two of them running this magazine, um, which is amazing. It's just the two of them. And what they do with this magazine so wait wait let me so it's just the two of them which is great so this is like small business cape cod exactly as opposed to like like all the other magazines are like owned by like someone somewhere else yeah like a big corporation maybe this is truly the two of them and once you read i mean this is i am a huge fan i love it i love it and you know eric who um we have part as part. Oh, of yeah, we should probably disclose why yeah. we're such. I mean, yeah. we're fans of it. We're we're genuine fans. We love this magazine. Agreed. But also, Eric does yeah. the editing for our show, which yes. is how we've gotten to really know it. But like, yes. honestly, we wouldn't put it on if we didn't actually no. know. It. And like, I oh think I've gosh, we're all busy. We'll put you on the list. Even, yeah, before I even before Eric was even involved with us, we had yeah. the magazine, and yeah. um, we're so grateful to Eric for helping us with what's good Cape Cod. And he's been in the magazine world since like 1998. He's really passionate, passionate and passionate about the printing world. Um, and, and they really bring the stories that they have to life on the pages, which it's just amazing. Um, they do. They Kelly, kind of go above and beyond, I think. They, they do. And that's the other thing. They really, um, you know, they actually, so they actually, during COVID is when they launched this, which obviously is not the ideal time to launch anything. Um, any kind of business. So Unless you make masks, that'd be yeah. good. Make, mask more hand making. sanitizer would have been yeah. really good. That's actually true. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so I know they had like a big thing planned, like a big, you know, um, reveal party and everything. And they, and they couldn't do that, but they're plugging along. They are, you know, they really believe that we need to read the stories of our neighbors and our local restaurants and coffee shops. Um, and that it builds pride and community and, and truly connection. And you can see the love that they put into this magazine. Um, yes. 
Totally. And they work with like Cape Cod and Island based photographers and they, and writers. So that's great. Keeping it all in the community. Um, yeah. There is, there was a couple sections in this. Is that the, is this the um, one yep. that you have out right that's now? That's the summer one. The summer one. Loved it. Okay. So FYI, we get a lot of good stuff from the magazine. Yep. And the magazine's got a lot of good stuff from us, right? Agreed. Yep. So like we, you're going to see the lavender farm on our show pretty soon. And which, what was the, and we talked about the Pelham house, the Pelham house we had talked about on our show. And then Eric got the idea to go and shoot there, which is awesome. So it's a, it's great for all of us. (laughs) I learned so many things in this magazine and, and even people I knew just having that deep dive on them or their business is, is wonderful. Um, Absolutely. In the, in the way they present it too, like the, this, like beach cruisers, like being able to drive on the beach is obviously a huge Cape Cod thing. This is a very Cape Cod thing. And they give you in this one, it's basically, I would keep this in my car. So I'm like, where do you want to go? Let's, where could we drive on the beach? Well, I've got the magazine that's got all the information in it. (laughs) Then they've done some really cool ones. Like, so they did, um, they had a story on three wild um, oyster harvesters, which were all in Wellfleet and they were all female, totally an awesome, awesome read. I loved it. And it was captured by local writer, um, Lisa Cavanaugh and then local photographer, Julia Coombs. They've done, you know, things with the Cape Cod baseball league with Peter Gammons. Um, what other things like the old silver shed, they did DIY projects. Um, so many cool things. And one of the stories they did during COVID was actually, they went, um, while we were all in quarantine and talked to a submarine pilot from the Woods Hole Instagraphic Institute down in Woods Hole and like talked about what it was like to be in a confined space for a long period of time, um, which is really cool. So they're always, they always just have like really cool ideas. They're totally on trend. And actually this came out during this article (laughs) is particularly relevant to me. Oh, backyard chickens, because how many of us got chickens during so the pandemic. Many. I did not. I want to. So many people have them. It was. <laughs> but I literally <laughs> used this as a re- a re- This book became like a reference. This yeah. magazine is a reference for me. And these, which I didn't realize, are Eric's chickens. Eric's chickens are the ones that are featured in there. Look at this little, little oh. peeper. So cute. Like, so anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you have other things you want to tell us about it. But like, oh, and cool. just, you know, the new. So. They'll, it'll be at the end of late October. It will be on newsstands, the new issue. So stay tuned for that. Um, and we just love this magazine. We think you will too. It's truly impressive what the two of them are doing, Eric and Kelly. And go buy an issue or sign it, up. Well, not just that, issue. advertising it. So both, both and Sarah and I, yeah. we advertise the show. We advertise ourselves. Yep. Um, very proud to be in it. It's a magazine we give as gifts. I put, I stage my houses with it. Like I put it yep. on the table. Me too. And it's, it's in my house. I don't know. It's it's just, I don't like a lot of magazines. This is one that I do. So that's it for this episode. So now you know what's good Cape Cod. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notified the next time we drop a new episode. And if you're looking for more information of anything we talked about today or in past videos, visit our website at whatsgoodcc.com.